Do you want to know how to press a button or a key to make vMix do something like this? Stick around to learn a little bit more about vMix shortcuts. G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and in this video today, we're going to take a look at shortcuts in vMix. Shortcuts allow you to press a key or a button to perform pretty much any function you want to do in vMix. There are currently over 300 different things you can do with just the press of a key, and vMix supports all kinds of controllers and devices. You can use your regular computer keyboard, Stream Deck, MIDI controller, X keys, computer joystick, or even an Xbox controller. Now, some programs might call these hotkeys, macros, or even chaswazzers, but in vMix, they're called shortcuts. Now, shortcuts also work well with vMix triggers, so I'd recommend checking out our vMix triggers video as well for a little bit more information about function-based automation with vMix. All right, so as you can see here, I'm now in my production. Now, I'm using vMix 24 today, so if things look a little bit different, you may need to update to the latest version. Uh, and as you can see, I have a really basic production. I have a camera or two or three, uh, and a couple of videos and a title. Now in this tutorial today, I'm gonna to quickly show you how you can overlay this title using a shortcut. So Tim title here is what I want to set up a shortcut for. So first of all, we'll need to go to the shortcut settings in vMix, and they can be found in the top right-hand corner in the settings menu. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna to go to the shortcut section, which is over here on the left. Now, when you open up this screen, it will bring up your shortcut screen and display any shortcuts that you currently have set up. Now, you can see that I have got two shortcuts currently available to me in my production. Now, the first one here is the red X keys button here that I have that overlays my confetti like so when I press it. And the second one I have here is the A key is hooked up to turn up my full screen. So I press the A key when I'm doing these tutorials so I can quickly go to my second screen. So it makes it easy to use. Now you'll see that the first one is in bold and the second one is not bold. So the first one's in bold because it's a local shortcut, meaning that I've saved it to this preset. So the preset that I have here, shortcuts 2021, the bold means that it's saved to the preset. Whereas the A key isn't bold, meaning it's a global shortcut and it's saved to my vMix settings. So for the local preset, it means that it only works within that preset. So I don't wanna use it across other productions, I just wanna use it in this particular preset. So I'll explain a little bit more about that later on when we get to that setting. Up the top, you'll see different categories. So if I click keyboard, it will break down any keyboard shortcuts I have, any MIDI shortcuts and that sort of thing across the top. Now on the end here, we have a really handy key called the find key. So if I click on this, I'll be able to see any shortcuts on the keys that I have set up for vMix. So for example, if I press the A key here and then click OK, it will highlight any shortcuts that are on the A key. And that's really handy if you've got a lot of shortcuts and you're like, I'm not sure whether I have a shortcut on that particular key, but you can go to find and then you'll be able to see it here and then you can either edit it or just let yourself know that you have a shortcut on it. Okay, so here's where the fun begins. Let's add a shortcut to our production. So I'm gonna click the add key down here and then right at the top here, you'll see a key slash control section. Now you can use the drop down menu to select uh, an option, say a keyboard here, like you can use A, B, C, D, all the way down, a lot of different options here. Now you can also choose something like voice and use vMix voice. So check out the vMix voice video if you wanna use your voice for shortcuts. Uh, but the easiest way to do things usually is to use the find key, which is next to it, which will allow me to just click find and then press the key that I wanna use. So I'm gonna do that today, I'm gonna to press find, and then what I'm gonna do is press my space bar, like so. So once I press that in, it's going to register that key so I can use it for a shortcut. Then click OK. So now we need to decide what we want the space bar to do. So by clicking the drop down menu, we can open up the function menu and see the hundreds of different options. We've spared no expense when it comes to our shortcuts. As you can see down here, there are so many different options that you can choose from. Anything from like simple transitions, complex audio routing, streaming, recording, turning the full screen on and off, overlays, all that is available in the shortcut section. Now, if you select all up the top here, you will see all of them down here. And those are then broke down into categories if you want to uh, say click audio, just to see audio or title, overlay and that sort of thing. Now, if you go back up to top, you can see uh, the ability to have a search here. So let's just say I wanted to just go to audio and 
see everything, every shortcut with the word audio in it, it will load all of those up. So if you ever wanna search, go up to the all, which will give you the option to see everything uh, and then search for it. If you do go to a category like general and then search audio, obviously there's not gonna be any here because there's no audio in that section. So for any searching, just go up to all and then search for it up there. So I should just quickly show you how you could switch cameras using a shortcut key. So what I would do is go to the transition category here and select a transition for it. So for example, I could select fade and then I would have the option to choose how long the fade would take. So 1000 is uh, one second, so I could change that to half a second. And then I could choose what input that happened on. So I could use the preview or I could then go ahead and select an input. So that's how you would set up a shortcut to switch cameras. So now I need to choose what function I wanna do. Now, as I mentioned before earlier, what I wanna do is overlay my title in channel one. So I'm gonna to go to the overlay section and then I'm going to select overlay input one. Now, a lot of the uh, shortcuts will give you a brief description underneath it. So this particular shortcut will toggle overlay one on and off, which is what I wanna do with my um, space bar. And I'd recommend checking out the help guide to see all of the different shortcuts and all the different things that they do. It will also show you different parameters and values that can be used on shortcuts. For example, this one doesn't need any values because it's just overlaying a title. But if you wanna set something like a volume level or a layer level or an input, there'll be another box here that'll allow you to put in different values or parameters. So check out the help guide if you want to know a little bit more about something. If you set a shortcut and you're like, oh, I'm not sure what the value needs to be, check out our help guide. So underneath that, you will need to choose what input you want the shortcut to perform on. So I want to choose my title. So I'm going to go down here and select Tim title. Now underneath that, you'll see a tick box that says assign shortcut to input number. Now what this tick box does is actually assigns the shortcut to the input number in vMix. So as you can see here, you can see the little eight next to Tim title because it's number eight in my vMix production. So if I tick this box here, the shortcut will only ever work on whatever input is in number eight. So if I move Tim title to number 10, it won't work on Tim title anymore. It will work on whatever is in number eight. Because I move my things around quite a lot, like my inputs around all the time, and I want to assign it specifically to my title, I'm going to untick this and that means no matter where I put Tim title, whether it's in input one, 10, 15, it's always going to work. So you just need to play around with this to work out how you want to set it up. Now, if you have a controller that you're trying to set up with a bunch of different numbers, like one to 10 only, then you may want to tick this box. So it's assigned specifically to that number. It's totally up to you on how you want to set it up. So underneath that, you have the ability to name the shortcut. You can also give it description one and description two. So I'm gonna call this one just Tim for now. Keep in mind that these need to be fairly short because there's not a great deal of real estate within all the menus and stuff like that. So if you hit a character limit, then you'll just have to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, now underneath that, you'll see a display option. Now this is the display that's available in the web controller in vMix. So what I could do is say I could set a color or I could set a, an image for it to display in the web controller. So when you load that, that up, you'll see a representation of it. Now you can leave this as default and it will just say what it is uh, in the web controller. Check out the web controller video if you wanna know a little bit more about what that does. Um, so that's the display. The only exception here is the Stream Deck. So the Stream Deck actually has display buttons. So you can actually display the thumbnail available on the actual key itself. But I'll go into that a little bit more uh, once we get to it. Now, you might be also wondering, well, how do I set like different functions when I press a key or when it's active? How do I make my MIDI controller light up different colors? Well, you can check out our activators video on how to set up feedback to the different keys when you create shortcuts or when different things happen in vMix. Underneath that, you'll have the ability to either save this to a local preset, so the, just the preset you use in vMix or a global preset that can be used across multiple productions. So I like to leave these locally because I don't share my settings across my productions because I do a lot of different tutorials doing different things. So I'm gonna tick this box down here, but it's up to you on how you would wanna set this. Again, if you've got multiple productions using like global settings that you wanna share across all your productions, then you can untick this to make them global um, or tick this to just save this to this preset. 
Now, finally, in the last option down the bottom, you have the ability to show in the web controller or not. Now you can use this option to create a specific set of shortcuts that someone can use. Say you might have a volunteer that you only want them to use four different shortcuts. So you could set that up to restrict them to only like cut to cameras and not to play around with your audio routing. So that's an option there for the web controller. Again, check out the web controller video for more information. So right down the bottom, I can just click OK and that will set up the shortcut. Now, as you can see here, I now have the name of it. I have what, what the shortcut key is, which is space, and it's actually bold. So it's a local preset shortcut. As you can see, the function is overlay channel input one and then for Tim title. Now, if you're just starting out with shortcuts, definitely play around with all the different settings to see what is going to work best for you. So now I'm gonna click OK down the bottom. And now we can test out our space bar and see what happens. So it should just overlay our title. There we go. And then I can press it again as it's a toggle and it will disappear. So that's how you can set up a shortcut on the space bar in vMix. All right, so let's just jump back into the shortcuts settings up here and then shortcuts to go over some more settings that we have available. Now, if you want to edit a particular shortcut, you can select it, click edit, or you can double click on it to open it up. And then once you've changed it, you can click OK down the bottom. Uh, you can clone it or duplicate it by clicking the clone button here. So as you can see, I now have duplicated uh, Tim shortcuts. So it will also appear red, meaning that anything that's red means you have multiple shortcuts on the one key. Now you can set up multiple shortcuts on the one key. That's perfectly fine. You could have a bunch of them if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, that will just appear red if you have multiples on the one key. So what I'm gonna do now is just edit this one to show you multiple actions. Uh, and then we'll go into it. And what we'll do is we'll overlay um, on channel two, my confetti. So we'll overlay my title and the confetti at the same time. So let's find my confetti, just this one here. Uh, and I could change this to confetti if I want to. Uh, and then click OK down the bottom. So what I've done now is on the space bar still, um, on overlay channel two, I'm gonna put my confetti, click OK. So now that will appear here, as you can see, I've now got confetti and Tim both on the space bar and they're red because they're using the same key. So if I click OK now, press the space bar, we now have confetti and we have my title. And then I can press that again to turn those off. So now we'll go back to the shortcuts again. You can also get it to a little bit quicker by using the quick menu on the side here and going shortcuts. And then in order to remove one, let's get rid of the confetti. We can select it and then click remove like so, and then okay. Next to that, you'll see a MIDI settings button. So we select this here and you can see any MIDI devices you have set up. If you need to set them up, you'll need to go into this section to enable them. Uh, and then it also has channel mappings to devices that support uh, channel mappings as well. The template section allows you to save your shortcuts to a template that you can import to another production. You can also apply some of the basic templates that we have by selecting them and clicking apply. So for example, if you wanted to map out your Xbox controller with our PTZ options here, this is a really quick way of selecting it and then applying it to your Xbox controller instead of having to set it all up individually. Now down at the bottom, you'll see the options for import, export, save graphics and apply. So I'm gonna click just a close down there. So if you wanna move around the shortcuts, you can select them and then use the arrow keys on the side here. VMix natively supports a lot of different controllers with our shortcuts. So you can just plug in your MIDI controller, Stream Deck, X keys or Xbox controller and start producing. Ideally, it's best to plug in your USB controller into your computer before firing up VMix, makes it a lot easier. And if you're using something like a MIDI controller, you will need to enable it. And you can do that through the, the MIDI settings. As you can see here, I have my APC mini um, already ready to go. So we have more in-depth videos on our YouTube channel that'll be linked in the description on how to use different devices. But I'm gonna really quickly go over some of the slight differences with the devices that we have. Alrighty, so if you're using a Stream Deck, you'll first need to download the Stream Deck application from Elgato Corsair, and then you'll need to set it up. So first of all, you'll just need to make sure that you go and search for the vMix plugin, grab it, and then you'll have the ability to add a vMix shortcut to the key. So if I drag this over here, you'll now see that it's available on the Stream Deck. So I just need to fill out any of these keys that I wanna add a vMix shortcut to, like so. And as you can see, it's filled it out. 
And then I just need to come back to vMix and then we'll go into our shortcut section again and set it up. So I'm just gonna quickly edit the spacebar one here, click edit, and then all I need to do is click find to find one of these keys that I've assigned the vMix shortcut to. So I'm gonna press this one here. Now with a lot of devices, you have the ability to set a function on up or down. I like to do it down because it makes it fire as soon as I press it as opposed to releasing it. So I'm gonna hold my finger down, click okay. So as you can see, it's now been assigned to this key here. And so everything else is pretty much the same except for the display. So I can choose the thumbnail here as an option. I can leave it as default and set it up in the uh, app that uh, the Stream Deck has, or I can use the thumbnail, which is the input preview uh, on the key. So when I click OK down the bottom here, you can see now on the Stream Deck, it displays my title and I can now overlay that in my production like so. And you'll see a uh, low frame rate representation on the key itself. Alrighty, so for MIDI devices, let's go into that same shortcut. We'll go to edit. We'll click find up the top here. As you can see here, I have this Akai APC Mini. So I'm just gonna press this button up the top here. As you can see, it's got up and down options. So I'm gonna go on, click okay. Now everything is set up like it was before. Now I could change the display. This refers to the web controller now. So I can just make that, it'll be default by default if you're setting it up for the first time. Click okay. And uh, now let's just press this. And as you can see, that's now working on the MIDI controller. MIDI controllers actually come in all kinds of crazy shapes, sizes, and colors as well. So you'll have different size keys, buttons, knobs, jog shuttles, sliders, all sorts of crazy stuff that you can program with shortcuts in vMix. So I'm gonna show you how you might wanna use a slider like this in vMix. What I'm gonna do is add a new shortcut. I'm gonna go to find, and then I'm just gonna use this slider here, slide it, and then I'm gonna slide it to the top, click okay. And now for the function, I wanna set it to control the volume of my camera. So I'm gonna select set volume here. And then for the input, I'm going to select my camera. And then I could give it a uh, title here if I want. And then click okay down the bottom. Now as you can see, I've got a new shortcut for cam audio and I'm going to click okay. Now, if you have a look at the camera down here in the bottom right hand corner, as I drag my finger down this slider, the volume is gonna get lower. It's going to get louder. So as you can see, that's the volume working. So yeah, that's how you can set up a slider. You could use it for a T-bar, audio, all sorts of crazy stuff in vMix. All right, so one last time, we'll do it for X keys. We'll go into settings and then we'll go to shortcuts and then this one here. I'm gonna edit this, click find. And for the X keys here, I can have a, an up or down option. Uh, so I'm gonna hold it down, click OK, and then I now have the ability to use my X keys in the production. So now that will fire up the title like so. So the supported controllers with vMix come in all kinds of crazy shapes and sizes and colors and prices. So don't forget to check out some YouTube video reviews or check out what other producers are using with vMix to give you an idea of what you might be able to use or buy or equipment that you might already have that you could use with the shortcuts. For more information about shortcuts, don't forget to check out the help guide linked in the description. Check out our website for our controllers page. It'll show you what will work with shortcuts and activators. And check out any of the videos that I have also mentioned today. If you do have any questions about shortcuts, drop us an email via the support page on vmix.com. We can't answer technical questions via YouTube comments because it just doesn't work. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Now that you've reached the end of this video, here are a couple of other things that might tickle your fancy. If you like to keep up to date with vMix videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For a free 60-day trial of vMix Pro, head over to vmix.com.